In this video, we're gonna break down five ways to add atmospherical effects to a still image or still graphic. You're still moving, you know. Five minutes later. Sorry, we're updating the Joshua interface, and hopefully this update comes with some better jokes for the channel. But it's all right, I have a text-to-speech program of Josh. So now we can learn five atmospherical effects to make your still graphics come to life. Joshua text-to-speech is now enabled. All right, always you can download project files to follow along and break things down. Now, my first tip is to actually start off your still image inside of Photoshop. The reason why is later on, you might want to remove things and animate them separately. So. Get your image into Photoshop and just go to File, Save As, and save it as a Photoshop document and then import it into After Effects uh, into here. So when you want to remove specific objects later, you'll be able to easily do it with Photoshop and I'll show you how in this tutorial. All right, so the first thing we want to talk about is creating weather effects because this is going to be like the most common thing you can do for an image. So what we're going to do to create this is we're going to go to a layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll go to Effect and we're going to go to Simulation and we can grab uh, CC snowfall or rainfall. Either one of those effects work fine. And now we're going to have some animated rain into our shot. Now the issue that we have here uh, is it's on the entire image and it would make sense if we had this composited behind, you know, the building here, like as if it was outside. So now we need to mask out the image and we only have to do this once. So to put this behind, what we're going to do is grab the pen tool here and all we're going to do is we're going to start masking uh, the windows here uh, so our rain can be on the other side and not inside of the building. So we have to come here for this image specifically uh, and start masking out every single window. Your image is going to be a little different. Maybe the masking is super simple. So just keep that in mind. Your image is going to be a little different than mine. So I'm going to go ahead and mask all these out and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so now we have the mask in here and the rain is outside. So whether you use the rain or snow or any atmospherical type effects, you want to make sure that it's behind your scene where it makes sense for it to be. So here, if you're using the rain effect, you can adjust the size, uh, the speed to make this a little bit slower, and you can adjust the wind to change the direction uh, of your effect. So here's what we have now with our simple masking and our rainfall effect. Now, one thing we might want to do here is add in a reflection of that rain onto the floor of our scene so that your image is going to depend. But how you can quickly do that is take your effect. You can just duplicate it, grab all the mask and just delete them. And you just got the rectangle tool and we can just grab the floor here, set our blend mode to say screen. And we can come here, hit T on keyboard for opacity and lower this down to say 15%. So now it should have somewhat of that reflective movement inside your scene. Another thing we can do to help with our atmospherical effects is to add, you know, flashes for lightning. You can add lightning effects if you choose to. But to add a flash is very simple. We'll go ahead and create another adjustment layer. We'll call it flash. And we'll come here to effect and we'll go to color correction and we'll grab uh, brightness and contrast. You know, somewhere in the middle of this body of work, we can add a keyframe for brightness. We'll move forward by two frames in the timeline and we'll come here to brightness and set this up to like 150 or something. And then we'll move forward by two more frames and set this back down to zero. So your keyframes should look something like this. So now we're going to want to keep this looping throughout the animation because it's only happening once. So what we'll do is come here to zero seconds, add a keyframe for brightness, which should be set at zero. And then we're going to hold down Alt on our keyboard and Alt click the stopwatch, right? And we're going to do the loop out expression, which we're going to use quite a bit here. And it should look just like that. So boom. So now somewhere around nine seconds, it should happen again. So every four to five seconds, uh, there will be flashes in your scene. Nikki again. Are you tired of boring, plain motion graphics that take forever to make? Did you know that we have a growing list of over 5,000 templates for After Effects in Premiere Pro? And you can preview every template in the Motion Duck extension before applying. And yes, I said Motion Duck. Yeah, it's kind of cute. Anyway, you import your template, change your settings, and now you have a full project ready to go for your demanding client or boss. Now you have more time to watch me take over Sonic Film's YouTube channel. Check out our links in the description for a free pack and to see all available templates. Now back to your text-to-speech software. Alrighty, so our scene is coming together in a very subtle way and I really like it. Now for those of you that want more, like obviously myself, uh, if you download project files, we have a particle template here. 
uh, that you can just download for free and be into your work is, you know, maybe it doesn't make sense for this scene, but for years you might want some floating particles in there uh, and you can easily change the color. So how it's implemented is just a pre-rendered footage uh, and you can just bring it in under screen, multiply however you want to bring it in uh, and you can overlay into your scene now. When you're bringing in multiple elements, one thing you might want to consider again is your actual uh, mask. So what we could do here is just take all of our mask, copy them, and we can paste them to the particles or any other asset that we have here, you know, so they don't overlay on the foreground of your image and everything stays behind where it needs to go. So now that we've done the atmospherical effects, now we gotta talk about lighting. You know, there's probably something in your image that you can animate uh, via lighting. So the lights in the building or, you know, this unique collar. So what we can do is we'll grab our main image and we'll go to effect, stylize, we'll grab glow, uh, you know, it's just going to depend on your image. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and set my glow threshold to 100% glow radius by a little bit and the glow intensity is going to go way up there. So it just depends on your image. You could just leave it here and animate it. But for me, I want to come here to A and B colors, uh, sawtooth B greater than A and, you know, change this to a nice bluish glow like so. And that's just my preference for this image. So go ahead and play with it. But when you got your basic look there, you're happy with it, take the glow effect, duplicate it or reset it. In my case, I'll set the glow threshold back up to 100%. And I'll come here to the glow radius and I'll click the stopwatch and I'm gonna do a wiggle, open frequency 10 comma 500. So now you should see this nice subtle flicker of your scene if you adjusted the settings here. Now a couple things I wanna do, I actually wanna show you why we use Photoshop here. So for example, I don't want this here. I can come here to Photoshop. I can make sure that my layer's unlocked. And I, what I can do is a number of tools that you can use. Uh, but I'll come here and grab, say, the spot healing brush because this is such a small object. And I'm just going to paint over it on my image. And that should remove it from the shot. And then I can click Save, File Save. And I go back over to After Effects after it's done saving. And it should be gone just like that. All right, so now let's go ahead and add one more color changing effect. So, you know, another tip here. What we'll do is go to Effect, Color Correction, and we'll grab uh, Change to Color. We'll go ahead and select, say, this blue on this collar here and come here to begin our timeline. And you see this looks really bad. We'll fix this in a second, but let's go ahead and go to the two color. We can set this to red or something or you know, go to a blue color. So this looks really bad, but we'll clean this up in a second. Come here to two and we can set this to like a bluish type color. And that should change the color here. And then we can add a keyframe for two. We'll come here in time, maybe six seconds, and we can change our color back to red or something like that. And this will allow for a color change. And then we'll move forward past that last keyframe, copy the first one and just paste it in there so we can create this loop. So that's cool. And then what we're gonna do is we'll all click stopwatch for two, type in a loop out, and that's great. Now to clean up the image here, what we wanna do is we'll grab the rectangle tool and we'll just like mask around what we wanna keep in here. And we'll hit E on our keyboard, go to our effect, go to compositing options, hit the plus icon and change that to mask one. You see it has only effect in there. I can add another one here as well. And with my other mask, I'll add the plus icon again and make sure that's set to mask two. So now it's only affecting, you know, these two areas of our image. So if I move forward here or something, it turns to red just right there. And feel free to feather these as well by hitting F on your keyboard for mask feather. All right, this next tip is super simple, but it's gonna impact your image in such a big way. And this is talk about how to add global texture and animation to your scene. So we zoom in here, there's no like changing of pixels, it's all static. So if this image was actually shot like on a video camera, there would be noise, uh, there would be some movement in those fine details. So what we can quickly do is create an adjustment layer and just go to effect, uh, noise and grain and add noise. Uh, and you might want to change this between four up to 12%, somewhere in that range, depending on your image. So now if we zoom in, now we have this extra texture here. I'm not sure if you see that well on YouTube, but it's there and it really does make a difference in the overall image. So another thing we can do is add movement is we can take all these layers, uh, go to layer, pre-compose, and we'll call it all. And we can add a little bit of camera movement to our scene by making this a 3D layer. And we'll have PR and keyboard for position and I'll click stopwatch and we can just do a wiggle open from C 0.3 comma, you know, 30. We want to keep it as subtle as we can. And we might just need to scale in just a little bit uh, to get rid of those borders. 
All right, so now with a little bit of camera shake and that noise, you might not see it so well on YouTube, but it's there and it makes a world of difference. So go ahead and take this tip and try to implement it into your work. Alrighty, and the last tip, I won't go too far into detail on how to create it, but adding small real objects into your scene. So we have some birds in here and also a plane that I just found through an image and animated it into our scene. Uh, so for example, the reason why we did this in Photoshop is because I saw like, hey, there's some birds in this shot. Um, it'd be great if they were animated. So I just grabbed it, you know, our spot healing brush. I painted them out and now they're out of the scene. Save it and update some After Effects. All I did was find a bird online uh, and I just animated his wings with a puppet pin tool. I won't go too much detail because you really don't need much animation for small objects like this. But I'll go ahead and link a basic animation tutorial uh, in the description below if you want to learn how to do something like this. Uh, and I duplicated it and we animated the position to go across. And then in our main composition, we added those birds, you know, in there. So, and the same thing with a plane as well. So those small details that you can add into your scene that makes sense can add a lot of value to your still image and really take this, what would be a still image to something that really feels alive uh, and you know, shot on camera. All right, I'm back on camera to close out this video. My update is done and my jokes are still the best on the market. So remember, you can download our free pack for After Effects and Premiere Pro, that link is below. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to smash that subscribe button, drop a like, and always, be creative.